Want an easy way to see if you could save money on car insurance? GEICO gives you three. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, go online to GEICO.com, or stop by the GEICO office nearest you. Three ways you could save 15% or more. <laughs> this, this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday. Over the airwaves of ESPN Radio. That's 98.7 FM New York City. That's 710 ESPN LA, ESPN LA. And of course, nationwide over the airwaves of Sirius XM Radio, ESPN Channel 80. Number to call up as always is 866-729-ESPN. That's 729-3776. 866-SAY-ESPN. Look, I got a lot of stuff that I want to get into today. Kevin Durant's comments saying that basketball helped him avoid systemic oppression. I got that to get into. I got the greatness of uh, of LeBron James to get into. I got David Fisdale, the coach for the Memphis Grizzlies, getting fired after an eight-game loser streak this early in the season. I'll tell you how bogus that was and why. But I got to tell you something right now. Being in Philadelphia last night, Watching the Cleveland Cavaliers go up against the Philadelphia 76ers, a Philadelphia 76ers team that that shot like three or 23 from three-point range, that couldn't buy a three-point basket to save their life, that was ballyhooed as the up-and-coming team. You know, everybody, trust the process, trust the process, which is something I absolutely positively abhor to the point where I want to cuss anybody out that asked me the damn question. I got to tell you something right now. The greatness of LeBron James and what he has been putting on display, I got to tell y'all, I'm a little depressed by it. Now, I know that's a weird, weird, weird angle to take. My producers are looking at me with their raised eyebrows. Jonathan Winthrop looking at me. You know, Nuno Texiera sticking his head over the window, seeing like, what the hell are you talking about? Cat passes like, hey, 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 what's going on with him? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. I got to admit to you. I got to admit to you. It's kind of depressing me, and here's why. The Chris Stapps Porzingis in New York. The Ben Simmons in Philadelphia. The Lonzo Ball in L.A., which, by the way, he doesn't even deserve to be mentioned in the same breath as the two aforementioned individuals that are rookies this year. Let me tell you something. Well, Chris Stapps Porzingis is not a rookie, but you know what I'm saying. Young players. I'm desperate. For somebody to show up and not literally wait at the altar of LeBron James, but be an individual that's young enough and stupid enough to get in his face and say, I'm coming for you and actually mean it. Actually mean it. There's no one. There's absolutely positively no one. In New York. As much as we may love Chris Stapps Porzingis, you still think he's the number one option? Still think that? You know better than that now, don't you? Now that they're on a three-game losing streak, now that teams have been allowed to zero in on him, get all up in those long legs of his, undercut him and what have you, push him away from the block, force shots to be tougher, suddenly don't look like the world beater he looked like for the first 11 games, does he? If you're in L.A., Ladies and gentlemen, let me say this for the record. I'm no longer scared of Lonzo Ball being less than what we anticipated. I'm absolutely flat out petrified. One for seven shooting, one for three point point range. For a player in his first 20 games – In the National Basketball Association, nobody has had a shooting percentage worse at this stage in their careers in 30 years. 30 years. That's how bad it has been for Lonzo Ball. And I don't know about the rest of y'all, but I'll be damned if I'm not worried. I'm getting very, very petrified for this young man. And in the end, we've talked about Kyrie Irving. We've talked about James Harden, who's another league MVP candidate looking absolutely surreal. We've talked about Melo and Westbrook and and, 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 and 
Paul George in Oklahoma City. We've talked about the Golden State Warriors and the greatness of that collection of talent. But the subject hasn't been altered a bit when it comes to who we believe to be the best player in basketball. That's LeBron James. By the way, he looks about 15 pounds heavier. He's averaging 28, 8, and 8. He's shooting 48% from three-point range in the eight-game winning streak that Cleveland is presently under. By the way, it's an eight-game winning streak like I just said. And they don't even have Isaiah Thomas yet. They don't even have him. I don't know about y'all. But this, 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 this is kind of demoralizing if you want competitive basketball because I'm here to tell you something right now. If LeBron keeps this up, the only t- only people that's going to be able to stop him is Golden State. There's nobody else that's going to be able to mess with LeBron James if this continues. What are you going to do? It's just that prolific. It's that great. It's that unstoppable. It's that awe-dropping. I wish I could get around it. I wish I could tell you that there was an answer. But I mean, damn. When you look at it right now, when you see the way that he's been performing, what is there to say? The man is built like a linebacker with a jump shot. And I wish I had an answer for you, but I'm worried there is none. 866-729-729. ESPN, that's 866-729-3776, 866-SAY-ESPN. That's one subject that I plan on getting into today. The other was that of Kevin Durant. Now, do we have that sound on Kevin Durant? Because I want the world to know this. We heard what Kevin Durant had to say. Talking about being a basketball player, talking about being a superstar, talking about being an African-American. In those positions. And essentially saying. If it wasn't for that. He would be treated less. Than what he actually is. You got a lot of people speaking up. And perhaps making folks uncomfortable on purpose. That's what we're witnessing. That's what we're seeing. But the reason I bring that up is because I juxtapose that to Taqib to keep to leap and Michael Crabtree getting in trouble by getting themselves suspended for two games based off of their fight this past Sunday. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, they deserved the two game suspension. You heard it here first. They absolutely positively deserved to be suspended for the two game. One room for it. Not happy about it. I like both guys. They deserve to be suspended. You just cannot do what they did. You cannot act that way. What they did was bad for football. What they did was bad for the NFL. What they did was bad for themselves. Really bad. But there's something even worse that they did that I don't think you all have considered. I'll let that marinate on your brain before I tell you exactly what that is. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. You are listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show ESPN Radio. I will revisit this topic and tell you how bad it is and why it's so bad that they did what they did in a minute. Stick around. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show. ESPN Radio. Want to be a part of the show? It's Stephen A. Up weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern at 866-729-3776. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I've never felt more alive. Disclaimer, GEICO cannot guarantee you will feel more alive. You either possess functioning respiratory and circulatory systems, or you do not, or you are a zombie. If you are indeed a brain-starved zombie and you would like to save money on car insurance, the GEICO legal team applauds your excellent life choices, even in your shambling afterlife. But we strongly encourage you to visit GEICO.com or download the GEICO app. Please stay a minimum of 500 feet away from our large and presumably delicious, delicious brains. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. 
not popular to say. It's not something that people want to tackle. But what you have to understand is that it's about being real. It's not about being altruistic all the time. It's not about talking about the way things should be or idealistic. Sometimes it's about being realistic and talking about the way things are. So I want to connect the dots for you. You have a situation where Colin Kaepernick takes a knee. He wants to protest racial oppression. He never was protesting against the American flag. He was saying that there are folks in this country getting away with not living up to what the flag is supposed to represent. Nevertheless, eventually the issue is hijacked. Primarily by the president of the United States, who, as far as I'm concerned, has won the issue of the day because he's brought the kind of attention to it that serves his purpose and that of millions of Americans who disagreed with Colin Kaepernick. Ratings for the NFL have slid. Revenue has dipped. All of these things have happened to the point where the residue is obvious. Jerry Jones fighting Roger Goodell for his his new contract. You know, that's just the most glaring, glaring piece of information that emanates from all of that. So when you're talking about that, why do you bring up Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree fighting? I'll tell you why. Because when they were talking, John, Kat, others, when they were talking, you heard the announcers, they called it a brawl. Okay? You know how people were looking at them, right? And how much money are you willing to bet that there were a plethora, meaning millions of folks out there, who in all likelihood look nothing like them, don't come and don't share their backgrounds or anything like that? How much do you want to make a bet that those individuals, looked at these guys and said, see how they're acting? And these are the people that have the audacity to protest our flag. That's how they're going to look at it. You and I both know that. Not about right and wrong. Because this is what it is. We can sit up there and slice it any damn way we want to. That's what it comes down to. How you conduct yourself, how you present yourself, particularly in this day and age as a professional athlete, matters. Because something as simple as that, that had absolutely positively nothing to do with the protest. The fact that Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree were on that field fighting like that and allowing themselves to be depicted in a way that they were being depicted adds fodder and fuel to those aching to attach negative stereotypes, looking to use it as an impetus or as motivation to justify their ill feelings towards those NFL players who are protesting. You see, when Kevin Durant comes out and he says what he says, understand something about Kevin Durant. And this is a dude that has attacked me and has gotten on me because he didn't like something. I said, I don't give a damn. Kevin Durant is a superstar. And he's a damn good young man. He represents our community and represents Various communities in this country in an incredibly upstanding fashion. Don't get me started with how wonderful his mama is. She is a special lady in a very, very good way. And she has raised a phenomenal son. Just because he has attitude and gets a bit temperamental at times doesn't take away from the great person that he is. And by the way, the same goes for LeBron. But you see, when they speak on these issues, knowing that they're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and they talk about systemic oppression and things of that nature, it's valid coming out of their mouths. Because they don't turn around and cheat the paying customer with nonsense like we saw from Akeem Tlaib and Michael Crabtree. And I'm in no way saying that Michael Crabtree and Akeem Tlaib did it on purpose. But the fact is they weren't conscientious 
enough to recognize that that negative spat just between them wasn't just between them. It was in front of the world. And when you do something like that, you feed the negative stereotypes. Presentation matters. And I'm going to take it a step further. I'm going to get on everybody about this. But I'm not going to apologize for attaching some blackness to it because when you're not even the dominant minority any longer, there are odds stacked against you that are more significant than odds stacked against people from other communities, whether it would be the Hispanic community or the white community. It's not that it's right for the odds to be stacked against you. It's wrong, but it is reality. And as a result, you got to climb that ladder. As unfair as it is, it's real. So how you present yourself matters. How you act matters. How you behave matters. How you speak matters. How you dress matters. Whether you like it or not. Kevin Durant had every right to say what he said. Being black in America, it's hard. What would he be if he wasn't bouncing the basketball? That's all they look at him as. They don't think much of him. He had to come to that realization that without basketball, he wouldn't mean a damn thing to most people who claim to love him so much. He's right. But be very clear. He also has the right to say it because he knows how to act. There's a lot of dudes that want to stick out their chest and bloviate and speak and go off about stuff. They don't want to act right. You can't have it all. You got to capitulate to something. Don't give a damn who you are. 866-729-3776. That's 866-SAY-ESPN. There's a reason why you love LeBron and Kevin Durant and Chris Paul and Dwayne Wade and Kobe and others. It's not that they're flawless. It's not that folks don't make mistakes. It's that ultimately they present and conduct themselves in a manner that exudes professionalism and a responsibility to something greater and higher than themselves. When you really, really get to talk and speak out is when you do that. When you don't do that and you're more concerned about yourself, you need to shut the hell up and go someplace. Or in the case of Tlaib and Crabtree, sit down for a couple of games without pay until you recognize that it ain't just about you. Paul Feinbaum, College football analyst extraordinaire up next. Talk to us about the imminent rankings coming out and about the debacle, the fiasco at Tennessee. That and more in a minute. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. It's always my honor and privilege to have my next guest on the line. He is labeled the mouth of the South by others other than me. Because as far as I'm (laughs) concerned, he is not just a mouth of the South. He is a mouth on all things college football. He's a mouth on all things football because he knows all the players, figuratively and literally. I'm talking about the great Paul Feinbaum, who's live with yours truly right now. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? It is always a pleasure, Stephen. I thank you so much. It means thank, a lot. Thank you. Let's let's get right into a couple of things. Before we get into these rankings that are coming out tonight and, and what have you, I got to talk to you about what happened um, at Tennessee because what happened to Greg Schiano, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most egregious, awful things that I've ever seen. You don't want him to be the head coach at Tennessee. So you're a bunch of fans and a bunch of Twitter trolls, and you associate this man's name with child molestation, accusing him of being a part of a cover-up, and Tennessee backs out. I- I have you ever seen anything in all your years of college football that has been disegregious? No, I haven't. And, and Stephen, I, you know, it, it – 
it may be it may turn out that Tennessee gets a better coach, and I'm sure uh, people will say they did the right thing, but they didn't do the right thing because they made false allegations. I mean, you hear the president and others talk about fake news all the time. I mean, this 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 wasn't even fake. I mean, fake usually is just something that that's made up to help your cause. I mean, this was. This was made up uh, to destroy a man, and and I don't know if he can get over that because if you're the next school out there thinking about hiring Greg Schiano, you're looking at this and going, I, I don't want to go through this. And you know, a, a lot of people were involved that that didn't have any earthly idea what they were doing, including state representatives, politicians, and and for for a university, uh, Stephen A. I mean, we both went to college, and you go to college to learn to to stand up for your principles. And if, yeah. if you're if you make a decision to hire someone, stand by it. Well, here's my question, Paul. Doesn't he? I mean, I know you're not a lawyer, but doesn't he have? Isn't it plausible that he may have grounds for a lawsuit against the university because of their irreparable um, harm they may have done to his his career? I mean, the only thing that yeah, he, he probably does. Uh, you know. It, you know, first of all, he's got. He may have a breach of contract suit, and then he may have a defamation suit. It, it would be a difficult thing, but more than likely, uh, I would love to take the case because the University of Tennessee would probably write him a check in about three minutes to get him off their back. Uh, because I mean, they they by, by caving in, they confirmed what everyone thought. Uh, and, and what was the most egregious part of it was the athletic director there, John Curry. I mean, he issued, after he backed out Stephen A. Then he issues a statement essentially saying that, you know, they vetted this man, they did due dil- diligence, like he quoted the Louis Free report uh, that nothing was wrong. Uh, then if that's the case, then why in the world did you back out? Paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Uh, on a lesser note, uh, UCLA has a new football coach. It's Chip Kelly. Um, what do you think about him taking that job? What kind of What kind of job do you think he's going to do at UCLA? Talk to me about that for a second. Stephen, he made the right decision. Uh, I mean, going to Florida would have been a mistake. And, and I, listen, I've met Chip Kelly a number of times sitting around the green room, so I don't want to act like, you know, we're, we're golfing buddies. But, he, but he, he's, an, he's an introvert. He's a great coach. But you know, if you, to go to Florida, I mean, you've got to be able to spend half the time schmoozing. And I don't think that's what Chip Kelly wants to do. He's, he's an offensive genius. I think he wants to coach. UCLA is, is not a top-ten job, but, it, but it's in a great league that he knows and has dominated when he was at Oregon. It's in a good market, and, and I think he will be successful. The question then becomes, what, what is success at UCLA? Is it winning eight or nine games, uh, maybe every five years going to the Rose Bowl, or is it trying to stay on the same level as, as Southern Cal? I, I don't know how possible that is. But, but, I do but know that, Chip that's Kelly. where I'm going. That's where I'm going, yeah. Paul. I want to know with Chip Kelly in Westwood, what's the possibility of Chip Kelly you know, usurping USC in any way there? Well, number one, he's a better coach than Helton at, at SC. I'm not. I'm not that impressed with with, with Coach Helton. I mean, he, he's with, with with a lot of talent, including Sam Darnold. Uh, even playing for the Pac-12 championship Friday night, I think he may have underperformed. I mean, Notre Dame, remember, just ran all over them. It was an embarrassment to Southern Cal. So I, I, I think that's doable. I, I really do. And, and UCLA has had pockets of success. They've had Troy Aikman, Josh Rosen uh, was a, was a, was a top flight quarterback. So I think Chip Kelly can can attract that type of quarterback. Uh, they're pretty close to getting a commitment from one of the best quarterbacks in the country, so if they can keep that commitment firm, uh, they'll be on their way. But I think if you're a hotshot quarterback in, in that area, I would rather play for, for Chip Kelly. I mean, you know he, he, he is the best in the business at offensive play calling. Talking about great Paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. Let's get into the rankings. Uh, before we even do that, would you mind explaining to me what happened with your boys, Roll Tide? Alabama, who you pick? I mean, I, I mean, you've been talking about them being the number one team in the country. I mean, you're not alone. I'm guilty of it too. You know what? I don't mind them losing. I didn't expect them to get beat up the way they got beat up, Paul. What happened? No, I mean, th- this was unbelievable. Uh, you know, Nick Saban has been out coached a handful of times in in his career, but I mean, he, he was badly out coached. And, and I, and I just think uh, in the end, you know, a couple of things went went wrong. Uh, he was playing in a very hostile environment. It was a toxic place to try to win. He, but but that's not that's not enough. His defense is beaten up. And and, then, and at the end of the day, Stephen, and this isn't this isn't what anyone wants to hear. But Auburn is playing at a level right now at home that is probably better than anyone else in the country. And Alabama just could not answer that. And what what, what got me what wasn't the fact that they were not executing that well, but they were just inept. I mean, that series toward the end of the game when, when you know, the two botched snaps 
I mean, that's inexcusable. And in fairness, uh, Saban has not always looked great in that, in, that, in that environment. He's had a couple of losses, not many. I mean, the guy loses once a year, so, so, so don't act like I'm, I'm, I'm writing him off. But, but it, it was a shocker. And, you know, and if it cost them getting in the playoff, then it, they probably deserve not to be in because you can't lay an egg like that on the biggest stage of the year in college football. For me, Paul, I look at the rankings, and if it were me doing the rankings, if I was one of these 13-member committee, 13-member committee members, here's what my number, here's what my ranking would be. I'd have Oklahoma at number one. I'd have Clemson at number two. I'd have Auburn now in the top four, having beaten Georgia when they were number one. Now Alabama when they were number one within the month. I would have them at number three. And I would have undefeated Wisconsin at number four with Alabama at number five on the outside looking in and Ohio State at number six on the outside looking in. Would you have any issue with that? I wouldn't have much at all. I mean, I, I, I've gone back and forth this week between Oklahoma and Clemson. Uh, they're, they're both pretty much on the, same, on, the, on the same level with the, you know, Wisconsin, I didn't want to believe in early on, but, but I give them credit. I don't think they'll beat Ohio State. So, you know, that will open up a, a very interesting door. And I, I think for the, uh, in the four years of the college football playoffs, Stephen A., we really haven't had what I would call great conversations. TCU versus Baylor the first year. Right. Uh, Ohio State got in. That, that didn't excite me. Last year, the Penn State-Ohio State conversation is actually the, the opposite of, of where we are now. Uh, Ohio State's in Penn State's position. What I can't buy about Ohio State, how do you lose by 31 at Iowa? On the, in the second half of the season, maybe on the first day you recover, but that, but that that's that's in the middle to to, to thir- the third quarter of the season. That's inexcusable to me, and, and so I would you know assuming that they could, they beat uh, Wisconsin, uh, I'm probably I would I would put Alabama in over Ohio State. Oh, I would, Again, I would, you know, the, I would elaborate right. on it from this perspective: you not only lost on the road by 31 to Iowa, you got beat up at home by Oklahoma. Yeah, you did. You did. You look bad on the road and at home. You lost. Okay, that's what... in both games. In both games in the second half, they were out of it. I mean, they weren't. Even, I mean, they, they were. They were. They were run over. Uh, again, uh, Oklahoma's a good team. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one, but I'm not going to give you two. Before I let you get on out of here, you question Miami and whether or not they were legit. Then they sit up there and they win a big game a few weeks ago against Notre Dame. And you put on the, the 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 hurricane chain, and you're like Miami is back. <laughs> you know, you know, looking looking like a middle aged rap artist. That's how you look, Paul Paul Feinbaum. Okay, it was hilarious. All right, it was great. It was great television. And after we're middle ready, age? and then, well, I wouldn't say that, sir. I'm, I'm being respectful. Being the, 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 no, not at all. No, please, please, you're a good looking man. But here's the deal. <laughs> Tell me this, Paul. And then they turn around and let you down with this loss. Oh, yeah. You, you know, listen. I don't know why everyone says they're automatic by beating Clemson. I mean, I, I, they, they should be disqualified for losing to Pittsburgh. How do you lose to Pittsburgh? Mm-mm-mm. Okay. I don't is, see By it. the way, is there, I is have there, no answer a, to that. Hey, by the way, is there, is there a 60-year-old rapper I can compare myself to? No, there are none, Paul. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They, they, they should be trying to compare themselves to you. You're great. Thanks a lot, buddy. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Stephen A. Take it easy, buddy. The one and only Paul Feinbaum right here with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio, 866-729-ESPN. It's 866-SAY-ESPN. You heard Paul Feinbaum break down college football's rankings. They're coming out tonight. You heard what I had to say. Oklahoma, Clemson, Auburn, then Wisconsin. Any problem with that? Get over it. We'll be talking about that. Crabtree and Tlaib. You heard what I had to say about that. LeBron James, the greatness of him, the Warriors, and so much more. Lonzo Ball, good Lord. Good Lord. Oh, I'll just leave it at that for now. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Back to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. Let's get right to the phones at 866-729-3776, 866-SAY-ESPN. Let's go to Fred. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Fred? Stephen A., brother. How you doing, man? I'm all right. Go ahead, man. Hey, man. First time caller, a long time listener, man. I, I I love what you say 95% of the time. Mm-hmm. This one particular time I had to call in, brother. I, I, I disagree with you on the crowd tree, um, the fight. What do you disagree uh, about? Um, you, 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 you kind of came off to me as saying we, 
you, you know, those two guys kind of solidify what certain people believed about us or that fight kind of gave us a bad rap. Okay. I think the people who look at that fight and they and they make up their mind off of that fight, yeah, yeah, they, they're exactly what Trump said they were. They felt that way about us in the first place. Okay, but, so, see, but see, here's where I have a problem with what you're saying. You come across as if I'm trying to say that those people are right. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that even when they're wrong, you have to pay attention to it. If you owned a business, right, Fred, and I'm, assu- I, I'm assuming that you don't. I, I apologize. It's not an insult or anything like that. If you own a business, I apologize. But if, if, if you're an owner of a business, right, and you're trying to sell a product, the customer could be trifling. But if you want their money, don't you have to appease to them? Yes, sir. And that's all I'm talking about. I'm saying that when you're in that kind of situation, certainly they thought that way anyway. Certainly they wanted an excuse to believe that about them. But as grown-ups, particularly African-Americans, we tell youngsters all the time, don't feed the beast. Don't give them the ammunition that they're looking for, even when we know folks are looking for it. And I'm saying the same thing here. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm saying it's a reality that you have to deal with and you can't ignore it. And I think those two players were paying no attention to it whatsoever. And that was my issue. I I, I agree 100%, man. And I I guess what the point I'm trying to make is um, you're not necessarily giving those people ammunition because they got all the ammunition they need already. Mm. Uh, They're going to feel how they're going to feel. If those boys went out there and said a prayer together, they're going to ignore that, and they're going to ignore the 99% of the time that these brothers go out there and treat themselves like absolute professionals in that one instant. I mean, we are talking about football, but you, but, but the most you, violent but you, sport th- in the world. That, that's true, but here's my point to you. Because football is the most violent sport in the world, and, you're, and you have a license to exact and exercise the violence against another human being, and it's completely within the rules, it's a gladiator sport. When you go beyond the pale, even in that venue, what does that say about you? Emotions, man. There we go. And what I'm saying to you, and what I'm saying to you is that you and I both can understand it, but we can't condone it if we're really in search of a better place. Because the reality is, is that there's more than enough violence within the rules that there's no excuse for you to go beyond them. To go beyond them, even when you already have a license to be more violent than the average Joe or citizen out there, speaks to an absence of control that you have. That's not an imagery that you want to give off. I, I, I agree 100%, Stephen. I'll let you go on this, man. I, I, You're 100% right. I just don't, if somebody took that like I did, which, you know, I kind of filtered it my own way mm-hmm. to think that, we need to try to appease to people so they don't look at us a certain way. And my, my thought on that is people who are going to look at you that way over right. an event like that already look at you. That's like fair. That That's fair. My response is they're still the paying customer and you want their money. So that's something that's a reality you have to deal with unless you had your own and you didn't need their money. That's all I'm saying. Fred, thank you for the call, my brother, and happy holidays to you in case I don't hear from you again. Really appreciate it. Kennedy, you're live with Stephen A. Go ahead. And thank you, Stephen A. Smith. Uh, like the last gentleman said, first time caller, long time uh, fan. And like you said, 95% of the time, I'm a great you, and 5% I'm not. This time, I, I am a great you, and man, you kind of took the words out of. I wish I would have been here first because the, the, what you ended with is basically where I was going to attack this from. Um, first and foremost, I am a professional. I've been in the Army for 72 years. And I'm an officer. In the you know Army. what? You know what, Kennedy? Do me a favor. I'm going to interrupt you because your signal is really, really bad, and I want to hear what you have to say. So we're going to go to a hard break in a little bit. I want you to hold on and make sure your signal's clear so we can understand what you're saying because we can't understand that right now. All right, my man, thank you so much. 
Let's go to Rob in the Bronx. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Rob, real quick. Just a few things, Stephen A. The Knicks are losing games because they got deplorable defense okay. and too many turnovers. All right. They got to fix that. And I hear my fellow New Yorkers. Rob, you only LeBron Rob, you James, only got 45 seconds, so just go ahead and make your okay. point real quick. Go ahead. I, I hear them talk about LeBron James. I take LeBron James here. He's the king. The Knicks ain't been to a final since 1999. Mm-hmm. We ain't won a chip since ni- 1973. Mm-hmm. The last playoff appearance was the first round 2013 bus. Come on. Why would you not want a man that's been to nine finals and, and won three? We ain't been to a final since 99. And as far as Lonzo Ball, I don't know. Lonzo Ball, look, he – Magic Johnson picked Lonzo Ball, and I know you, you dissed me the last time I said that. He gave the people what they wanted, but if, Lon- if Magic would have took Tatum, no one, would, no one in L.A. would even be thinking about you, you, Lonzo you're Ball. You're probably right. right about that right now, Rob. This is a good time to say that. Nobody can dispute you or refute what you're saying right now. You got me there. 866-729-ESPN, 866-ESPN. Hour number two up next. More NBA and NFL action to get into. Don't touch that dial. Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.